Welcome to the video on uh, Mechanics 2. Uh, in this video, we will be looking into the first unit of uh, Mechanics 2, uh, especially Galilean transformation and frames of reference. The first unit of uh, Mechanics 2 is uh, non-initial systems and fictitious forces. The book for study is Introduction to Mechanics by Daniel Kleppner and Robert Kolenkov. For first module, you have to study from section 8.1 to 8.5. That means the chapter 8 and section 8.1 to 8.5. In the first semester in mechanics 1, you must have learned about frames of reference and inertial frames. So if you recall that, in order to specify position, velocity, acceleration, force, momentum, etc., you need to have some reference. And this reference we call as a uh, frame of reference. If I simplify it to a very large extent, frame of reference is a coordinate system which is attached to a rigid body. The attachment not necessarily means that the uh, frame of reference has to sit on the body. It can sit somewhere else. Also, it can have some motion uh, with respect to the body. The simplest example of frame of reference is a Cartesian coordinate system. So there are two types of uh, frame of reference. One is called uh, inertial uh, frame of reference and the other one is called non-inertial frame of reference. The inertial frame of reference, Newton's laws of motions are obeyed always. And in non-inertial frame of reference, Newton's laws of motions are not obeyed. In other words, inertial frame of reference is a frame of reference which is at stationary and a non-inertial frame of reference is the one which has some acceleration. Now let us look into uh, a frame of reference which is moving with a constant velocity with respect to an inertial frame. Is an inertial frame or not? Let's take uh, an example. A person alpha sits in an inertial frame and a person beta sits in another frame which is moving with a constant velocity with respect to the inertial frame. This is the example in your uh, textbook. For simplicity, let us take some assumptions. Both alpha and beta has a Cartesian coordinate system, which, which means that both of them have the x, y, z coordinate system. And the axes are aligned. Axes are aligned means the x axis of the, uh, the x axis of the alpha is parallel to the x axis of beta y-axis of alpha is parallel to the y-axis of beta and z-axis of alpha is parallel to z-axis of beta. So their axes are aligned. At time t is equal to 0, both the axes have same origin. And there are a few more assumptions. Both of them have same standard of mass. That means if both of them measure mass of a particular object, they should get exactly same value. Both of them have same uh, standard of uh, length that means if the both of them measure length of an object they will get exactly same value and they are agreed upon a unit so in uh, si uh, it is meter if alpha measure the time interval between two event as t beta should also measure the time interval between the same event same two event as t so these are the uh, pre uh, preliminary assumption and we take it for uh, simplicity now at time t is equal to 0, the coordinate system of alpha and beta are same. But as time progresses, the coordinate system of uh, beta is moving away from alpha with a constant velocity, capital letter V. Now, alpha and beta are doing uh, some experiment. They are measuring position of a particle at different interval of time. So, alpha measure a position of the particle at different interval of time. Beta also measure the position of the particle at different interval of time. Now from alpha's frame of reference, the position coordinate of that particle is R alpha. From beta's frame of reference, the position of the particle is R beta. At a particular time, the origin of alpha and beta are separated by a distance, capital letters. Or the origin of beta is shifted by S amount with respect to the origin of alpha. Then you can write the position coordinate of the particle from beta's frame r beta is equal to r alpha minus s. So if alpha see the acceleration of the object as a alpha, 
which is equal to second derivative of the uh, r alpha or uh, d square r alpha by dt square and if beta c is the acceleration of the object as a beta which is equal to d square r beta by dt square from a uh, newton's second law of motion alpha measure a force which is equal to f alpha which is equal to mass times acceleration of the object which is f alpha is equal to m into a alpha and beta measures force as equal to f beta which is equal to m into a beta this both of them applied newton's laws of motion there and they got the equation of motion now let's take that uh, the equation what we got as uh, r beta is equal to r alpha minus s to take the first derivative v beta is equal to v alpha minus capital letter v so v beta is the velocity of the particle from beta's frame of reference v alpha is the velocity of the particle from alpha's frame of reference and capital letter v is the time derivative of s or ds by dt to do one more time derivative you will get a beta is equal to a alpha minus zero now why it is zero because i said that beta's frame of reference is moving with a constant velocity v with respect to alpha's frame of reference that means capital letter v is constant or if you take the time derivative of v it will be zero so you what you got is a alpha a beta is equal to a alpha and if you multiply by mass m into a beta is equal to m into a alpha if you apply newton's uh, second law of motion which is equal to the force in beta's frame of reference which is f beta which is equal to f alpha so you got both the forces are equal which means in alpha's frame of reference and beta's frame of reference you would measure same force or the equation of motion in alpha's frame of reference and beta from beta's frame of reference is exactly same or by looking into the equation of motion we cannot distinguish between an inertial frame which is at rest and a frame which is moving with a constant velocity with respect to the inertial frame or simply we can say that a frame which is moving with a constant velocity with respect to an inertial frame is also an inertial frame now let's look into the transformation equation so you got a uh, r beta is equal to r alpha minus s i said in the beginning that uh, alpha and beta has agreed upon some time scale at uh, when time t is equal to zero the origin of the alpha's coordinate system and beta's coordinate system are same or you can say that uh, v is equal to s by t s is equal to vt now if you plug it back you will get r beta is equal to r alpha minus vt and i said both of them have same uh, time interval or t beta is equal to t alpha this two, these two equation is known as galilean transformation equation now if the beta's frame of reference is moving only in x direction and there's no motion in y or z direction then we can uh, again uh, rewrite this equation as x beta is equal to x alpha minus vt y alpha by y beta is equal to y alpha z beta is equal to z alpha t beta is equal to t alpha where x y z are positional coordinate t is the time coordinate this galilean transformation equations transforms coordinates of an event from one coordinate system to another in any doubt or any queries or any comment please comment below thank you so much for watching this video i'm dr pradeep your physics teacher please watch the next video